Hi, I am Cindy Weiss. I'm the High School Executive Marketing Manager at WH Freeman of Bedford Freeman and Worth BFW Publishers. We thank you for joining us this evening to meet with Andy Friedland, author of the Friedland Relier Environmental Science for AP that we publish. Um, hopefully everybody had success on the exam last week. We uh, are, chose a topic that I know a lot of the teachers are interested in um, as you teach APES the AP Environmental Science course, how do you keep the big picture and keep the enthusiasm your students have in trying to do the right thing, make the right choices, um, to be environmentally friendly and, and use as much data-driven decision-making as we can. And so that's a lot of what Andy is going to share with us tonight um, to help you share that information with your students. So without further ado, Dr. Andy Freeland. Thanks, Cindy. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining in. And it's nice to um, talk to everybody who I, even though we only, a few of us chatted uh, a few minutes ago, um, I think people are more relaxed now. The exam <laughs> is over for the year, and so that's a good, that's a good feeling. So I hope what we can um, talk about some things that maybe will be useful for you as you're teaching students for the last few weeks of this year, or maybe you could use them um, in future years. So I put a few pictures on the front slide here the cover of the textbook and if you haven't seen the book Cindy can definitely get you a copy and then also a few figures showing hinting at what we're going to be talking about um, here's a college dorm room or maybe it's a high school person's room I think it, yeah it might be a high school person's room it's kind of messy referring to entropy and here are some a system and what happens to energy flow going through the system um, so what I want to do today, and I know some people are still connecting and some people are on but don't have audio, and so I might just repeat myself a few times in the first few minutes for the people who are coming in late. But I briefly want to describe my background as an environmental scientist. I want to describe my involvement with APES, and I want to tell you a little bit about my teaching philosophy. Um, I want to describe our new environmental science textbook, Environmental Science for AP, which has now just is in the end of its first cycle. That is, some of the people online and others around the country, a uh, fair number of teachers and students have used the book, but only for this one, this is the first year. And then I want to take some of the fundamental course topics in AP Environmental Science and connect them to big picture decision making as it is informed by life cycle assessment. And so in doing that, we'll define a system and illustrate how defining system boundaries has a large influence on what you call the, quote, impact of an action. And it really is a matter of how big you make your system, whether you include certain parts of the impact. So that's what I'd, I'd like to do. And um, if you're listening and you're uh, there and you know how to use the raise the hand button, I'd love to just see quickly um, how many people have taught with Friedland Relier Environmental Science for AP. So um, I'm raising my hand and I see some hands going up, at least three. Okay, good. Um, so so just have I it, will. I, um, sorry, Andy, just so people know how to raise their hand, there's a participant box. Um, that you should see where all the names are. And you'll see a little hand on the left-hand side toward the bottom of that box. You can click on that to raise your hand and then click on it again to lower it. That's how you raise your hand to answer a question that Andy's posing. Thanks, Cindy. So it does look like maybe a third or half the people on this WebEx today um, have used the book, so that's great. And so um, I'll go ahead and describe certain things and understand that some people are quite familiar with it and others maybe are looking to learn. Um, I was an undergraduate environmental studies and biology major, and then I did my graduate work in environmental science, which was really in, in, in geology and earth sciences department. And I'm now a professor of environmental science in an environmental studies program, so I really enjoy the benefit of speaking to and working with environmental scientists and environmental social scientists and environmental humanists. My involvement with AP Environmental Science began in 1995 when I was asked to chair the committee that created AP Environmental Science, and I was chair for about three years, and we developed the first few exam offerings, and then I stepped down from that committee and shortly thereafter became the chair of my environmental studies program here at Dartmouth. 
and I like to watch the uh, growth of AP Environmental Science, and I know some of you on the webcast today have participated in this. There were 5,000 exams taken in 1998, and we hit the 100,000 exam mark last year, and it looks like there are about 106,000 exams that were taken last week. So um, aside from that initial involvement with AP Environmental Science, they asked me back, the College Board asked me in 2008 to 2009 to participate in a curriculum development and assessment committee, which was tasked with reevaluating AP Environmental Science and looking to see if there were any changes that could be made. And while we had a lot of things to say, to my knowledge, there's none of that that's being implemented any time in the near future. So my understanding is AP Environmental Science is staying as it is for now. And if anybody has any new information or any different information, by all means uh, type in a comment or something. So environmental science in the context of the AP Environmental Science curriculum is the study of the natural sciences and the interactions of the natural sciences with human beings. And maybe the exception to that is that economics is often included in the APES curriculum, just to a small extent, and economics is not something that's typically thought of as being in the natural sciences. When I teach, I like to provide breadth and depth. So I like to show people the context of the problem or the issue, but I like to also show them how you can learn a lot about, you can go into great depth about a particular subject. And I also try to impress upon people there's so much we don't know. There's so much that we don't understand fully. I like to use quantitative reasoning, reasoning when it's needed, and with some of the life cycle assessment we'll do today, you can, you'll see how we can do some of it qualitatively and we can do it quantitatively. I try to be as neutral as I can. I've done that, I hope, in the book, and I do that in my teaching as well. That is, I don't necessarily come right out and say, nuclear energy for generating electricity is bad, and here's the way it works. Rather, I try to talk about all the good aspects of nuclear-generated electricity as well as the troublesome aspects and maybe don't even give away my own feelings or maybe I do that later on. Um, and I think it's important, and I imagine all of you do as well, to use relevant examples whenever possible, not just talking about things theoretically, but how they actually are looking in the real world. And I try to use my own backyard and my students' backyard, and I imagine that's something that you do as well. Um, so these kinds of ideas, these things in my teaching philosophy and, and the definition of environmental science is well represented in our book, and I think you'll see that. Um, our book conveys a modern synthetic approach that includes system thinking and with life cycle assessment and understanding the big picture, it's really important to identify your system and articulate what it is and identify where it begins and where it ends. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, we include and integrate global change, so that's global warming, but also many, many broader aspects of global climatic change and sustainability. We use quantitative reasoning, that is the ability to um, use numbers when necessary to answer questions or understand a situation. And as we were talking, um, some of us were talking before this WebEx got started, um, it's pretty clear that that ability of, of using, numer using numbers and numerical literacy is essential to success on the AP exam. Um, we use relevant examples, and it is our book is the only one that was built from the start for AP Environmental Science, and it has designed in it a number of, I didn't know what to call these, AP-friendly features, um, a, a, things that will be friendly to you if you're trying to have your students be successful on the AP exam. Um, we have do the math boxes and checkpoints and AP style multiple choice questions at the end of every chapter and AP style free response questions at the end of every chapter, including proximate point distributions that you might encounter, and also a project uh, at the end of each chapter called Measuring Your Impact, where students have to do some data gathering and some calculations. And I'll illustrate almost all of these um, during the slides. I have about um, 25 or 30 slides here, and we have, oh, about um, something like 50 minutes. We'll end at 5, at, sorry, at 6.30 Eastern time promptly.